isolation. Stay away from all the subway stations. Now's the time to limit your relations. This is info for your conservation and observation. I am at my home. I am all alone. I am at my home. In isolation. Isolation. Time for practicing your masturbation. Sorry that you canceled your vacation. It's not just you, it's the whole entire nation. In isolation. In isolation. I am at my home. I'm at my home. I am all alone. I'm all alone. I am at my home. I'm at my home. In isolation. My constipation in isolation has really helped my toilet paper situation. Should hold up depending on the duration that they keep us in isolation. I am at my home. I'm at my home. I am all alone. I am all alone. I am at my home. I am still at my home. I am in isolation. In isolation. Isolation. A conversation we should have with every single generation. The older people need a working vaccination. The younger people are afraid of decimation. I am at my home. I am all alone. I picked up the phone. Hello. And I said hello. Hi. Isolation, regurgitation. Unless you find a way to get some inspiration, make a creation, film a claymation, or just eat chips and talk to friends while on PlayStation.
isolation. Stay away from other subway stations. Now's the time to limit your relation. Information for your conservation and observation. Isolation. Time for practice in your masturbation. Sorry that you cancel your vacation. It's not just you, it's the whole entire nation. In isolation. We believe we should confront anxiety with a clear plan to deal with its root causes. Um, just before we get to questions, I'm supposed to model healthy behavior. Model healthy behavior. Nice and sunny, but a little brisk. My constipation in isolation has really helped my toilet paper situation. Should hold up depending on the duration. I have to stay in isolation. Isolation, a conversation you should have with every single generation. The older people need a working vaccination. The younger people are the fear of this Listen, Canada is a modest country. We know we can't solve these problems alone. We know we need to do this all together. We know. It will be hard work, but we're Canadian, and we're here to help. And it's our job as your government to do justice to that compassion and to that kindness that you show to one another each and every day. We can build a better world for our kids and grandkids. This is who we are. This is what we believe in. This Agitation, unless you find a way to get some inspiration, make a creation, feel my cremation, or just eat chips and talk to friends while on PlayStation. Station. Tonight's show, Nikki Payne, K. Trevor Wilson, Brian Barlow, Ryan Bell 
Smallville. The DG Special News with Sebastian Siddiqui. Featuring me, Josh Finkelman, and Dan Tamizian. And now your host, Dan Gallia. How are you? I will do a good show for you today, and you will like it. <sighs> Anyways, uh, hey guys, welcome to the DG Special Episode 4. Uh, we got a super fun episode for you. Uh, so many of my favorite people are on the show. I just feel like I've been on a roll here. I just, I mean everyone is just at home so it's been uh it's been a lot easier to get guests that i really want uh that i have been trying to get for a while so today that show is today is now what i'm just too excited guys let's uh let's bring josh and dan in here i want to see how their weeks were and josh and dan are you there i'm here hey josh how's it going it's great man how are you not bad Uh-oh. not bad hey dan so for those of you that don't know, it's your first time watching the DG special, Josh Finkelman over here, K Josh Radio on Twitter, is uh, the voice of the show. So if you're talking to us or you want to ask some question or you uh, have a thought that you want brought up on the show, if Josh deems it valid, he shall move the question onto the live broadcast. Um, he's also just the voice of the show. So thanks for doing that, Josh. And Dan Tunisian down there, he's the guy behind the switches. So... Anytime you see a video, anytime you see something switch, that's Dan Tamizian, and he's like kind of like the Wizard of Oz. I, I always think of him like that. I don't, from the day I met you, I thought you were the Wizard I, li- I live behind a curtain, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just moved from behind that curtain, actually, yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty great. What have you guys been doing uh, this week? Anything special? Anything different happen? Josh? No, uh, you know, just the, the usual I've taken to doing, uh, I do a 10 minute yoga routine every morning when I wake up, which um, probably is not actually doing me any good because I'm probably doing it all wrong. But I do it every morning. I wake up and I roll out the stupid mat and I do my 10 minute uh, yoga thing. I have a couple different routines I do, whatever the app tells me. Um, and then this morning uh, I went to pick up my mat when I was finished so that I could go make coffee and whatnot. And uh, I fucked up my back somehow. <laughs> it was like bending down to pick up my yoga mat and I my so all day I've been limping around my house. Um, and so I really think that yoga doesn't work. That's, no, that's because you're, I've, I've always thought this, you've changed a lot since I met you. And I really do feel like at some point, Bizarro Josh killed the other Josh and has been living on our earth. And on Bizarro World, yoga make back bad. It's, you know what? It's entirely possible. It would explain a large number of things <laughs> about my life. That would definitely do it. <laughs> How about you, Dan? What'd you do this week? Uh, my big project this week was I, uh, I like working with wood, but I've been too, yeah, obviously I'm not going to like a hardware star- store to buy wood. Doesn't seem like an essential item, but, uh, so I like, I tran- I transformed an old shitty wooden shoe rack into a spice rack and put it on my wall in the kitchen. That was my big, that was my big thing this week was like made, doing a, High school woodworking project, making a spice rack. Nikki Payne. Energy to do something like that. You know, I look busy because I'm just sitting here making streaming shows, but like I couldn't get up to make a spice rack if you paid me a million dollars. It took me a month. Like I was like wanting to do it even before this. And then I was pretty drunk. So it's like a little, it's like this. <laughs> it's like this wonky. <laughs> I love it. it. Um, <laughs> I would like, yeah, you got to fill the time, you know, and uh, now's the best time to just kind of learn a new thing. I've been like trying to learn all these weird programs and yeah, it's been, uh, it's been super fun. And you got to put it online. Otherwise, um, from what I can tell, it doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. Yeah. If you don't do, if you don't do a live stream of some sort, um, then you're not doing it. (laughs) So just uh, some housekeeping stuff uh, before we get the show started. As you know, I like to move the show along. Um, you can donate to the show. Uh, Josh will post the link to the donation. Already there. And uh, if you want, you can buy us a coffee, which is how you donate to the show. The money will go back to uh, the show. So hopefully we can buy more uh, Zoom months on, and uh, <laughs> stuff like that and keep doing it. 
And uh, also uh, the best thing you could do, even better, I think, than money, because we're not getting enough money to do anything with it. Uh, let's just be honest. Uh, nobody wants to give away money right now. Um, is share this, share this live stream. If you're watching it right now um, and you share this stream, it'll make my day. And it'll honestly help uh, more people see it and uh, it'll help me um, want to do it more, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the main thing. Please share this. And, uh, and this week, guys, I, uh, I had a rough week. I, I decided I got to have some real talk right now. Uh, I'll keep it light, but uh, I suffer from anxiety and depression occasionally. And, uh, you know, I've had a pretty steady, uh, anxious feeling going on through this, uh, but it hasn't been that bad. Um, and then this past three days, I've been kind of on edge. I've been feeling a little edgy, uh, definitely not feeling like, you know, the funniest guy in the world. Um, but, you know, this is this is why this show is so great is because I don't have to be the funniest guy in the world. I can just bring the funniest people onto the show. And I really did bring the big guns, starting with our first person here. I have been looking for someone to do the DG Special News, be my anchor, you know? And uh, it's been a long trek, but I think I finally found the person for me. He did a great job uh, with his YouTube channel and uh, hopefully he pulls it out for us tonight. I want to bring it over to the DG Special News with Sebastian Siddiqui. Sebastian, what's going on? Let's do this. <laughs> Hello everyone, I am Sebastian Brown Siddiqui and you are watching the DG News. For our three topics today, we are doing the coronavirus can't sit on bench, the Mario Maker 2 last update, and complaint letters. Okay, firstly, the coronavirus pandemic don't sit on a bench. These two stories include me and my mom and me and my mom there's both okay first one we were by the dog park in Trinity Bellwood just minding our own business sitting on a bench there were some police officers nearby but we didn't think anything of it until one of them approached us my mom thought something was wrong so she said hello police officer is there something wrong and he said yes the reason was you're not allowed to sit on benches while this pandemic is out. It's not safe to just like keep to yourselves like on a bench because it, people will think you can do that so they will start doing it. All right, the second story includes me and my mom again. You're sitting at the baseball pitch, not on a bench with doing a bike ride and a truck was pulling up to us. And my mom fingered something was uh, wrong again. So she figured we'd have to leave and keep biking. Those are the two stories today. Second topic, Mario Maker last update. The last update is includes 10 new items and probably eight more bosses including lemmy larry iggy and the rest of the koopalings and the items are propeller block bullet block cannon block goomba mask and the last one i don't remember and they also added some other new suits like um the new super mario bros 2 style mushroom you can ride on enemies and pick them up and throw them the next one is in the, super, the new super mario bros u version which is the acorn suit fly around cling onto walls and get an extra boost while flying the last ones are the frog suit and the boomerang suit. And now on to the third topic, 
complaint letters. These three complaints will be to Bethesda, Disney, and what should be the last one? Hmm, let's see. Orange juice companies. So let's start off with the first one. Bethesda. Dear Bethesda or Skyrim games, it's it must be really fun because some of the last few years in either 2017 and 2018, you ruined Fallout 76. It looks terrible. And why? Just why? When you set up your camp and you exit the game and you put up your save file, it's not there. Ah! Send. Okay. Now next one to all the people in the world. Dear all, this is such a global pandemic. I can't believe our people have done this. We've created useless stuff like cars. We could just bike everywhere. But wait, how do you get to the place on highways? Anyway, the thing is, you're ruining the environment. Masks and gloves have been scattered everywhere around Toronto. You feel the humans? Coronavirus isn't the virus. We are. And set. The, la the last one is to Disney. Dear Disney, I, what it's la I wonder what it's like creating really beautiful cartoons and stealing other stuff from other companies. Marvel doesn't deserve your possession. And same goes with National Geographic. Will Smith doesn't have to do this all the time. And send. Well, that was DG Special News. I'm Sebastian Brown. Can you hear? Now to Josh with the weather. <laughs> uh, the weather, I thought I, I thought I was losing it there. I could see your lips moving, and I was like, am I? Can you? The weather is cloudy. That's what the weather is. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was awesome. That was great. That it's is totally telling good. it how it is. And now we know about the new Mario Maker updates. And, yeah, that's a, that was a crazy story about the bench, too. That, well, yeah, the, they're out there. They're out there in force, man. You can't, uh, no benches. That's the time we live in right now. I was thinking. And I agree, guys. Stop polluting, okay? Stop throwing your gloves and your masks all over the place. We get it. You use them and they're done. That's what a garbage is for. Yeah, it's uh, it's a gross. Uh, with all the, and it is Earth Day actually. It, it's Earth Day today, and that's a good bit of advice, Dan. It's also, um, it's something that we should all keep in mind because as as all the environmental improvements that are not for being present has brought, now the floor is covered in gloves and masks and that's just my apartment oh wow yeah. interesting all right well josh i'm gonna keep the show moving along Let's do it. um up next is one of my favorite people uh nikki payne uh we lived together for a short period and uh in that period she got a dog and uh she became very very into pets and animals and uh she said she had something she wanted to promote so uh, let's bring her out. Nikki Payne, come on out. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. 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 How's it going? Not bad. Thanks for doing the show. Oh, no problem. No problem. I have a very exciting product. Well, please uh, take know? it away. 
Okay. You know how, uh, you know, we're all looking for alternative ways to make an income during the pandemic when you can't do comedy. And uh, I, um, the entrepreneur that I am, I, uh, I came up with a really great idea. I was thinking, Nikki, what's not out there in the world that people need? And I finally got it. Lingerie for cats. I have a new line of lingerie for cats. It's called Nikki's Pussy Intimates. And uh, right here, uh, live on the DG special, uh, I am going to show you the, uh, the first of my uh, line of lingerie for cats. Oh. Let's go. Uh, the first one is, uh, you know, after a cat's had, you know, two or three litters, uh things start to sag um and uh you know your cat might want some support so um i have um a pussy cat bra that i've made uh right there um there's six cups but we make them in eight uh my cat just happened to be a six cupper <laughs> and uh yeah so there's six cups there and uh and the, the cat's nipple will uh fit nicely into uh each one like that and uh sorry there's um a little bit of blood <laughs> on, on the bra because we had a bit of an incident uh the straps are um adjustable as well as the uh the, the back snaps and uh it has the uh the signature nikki's pussy uh red bow in the middle the next item is, let me tell you, Dan, it's my favorite. It's um, just so gorgeous. Uh, it is a uh, beautiful negligee for your cat. Look at that, hey? Beautiful, beautiful lace, uh, just extraordinary. Uh, again, adjustable straps. Um, really your cat could wear this, um, geez, uh, your cat could wear this day in, day out, or you know what, it's special enough that, uh, that she could wear it on her wedding night if she wanted to. It's just, it's that beautiful. And just so you know, uh, the, all our items uh, at Nikki's Pussy is um, uh, uh, upcycled. They're all um, made out of my uh, old underwear. So you don't have to worry about the environment. <laughs> it's okay, Sebastian. These, uh, Nikki's pussy is not hurting the environment. <laughs> now, Dan, I know, I know what you're thinking. WTF, Nikki? <laughs> Where's the shapewear? <laughs> Don't you worry. I've thought about it uh, because, um, you know, cats, house cats are uh, predominantly, you know, uh, you know, have a sedentary lifestyle. So um, they tend to get a little like the rest of us, a little thick in the middle. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes they just really, you know, for special occasions, want to be able to um, to smooth that out and, um, and 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 feel really confident. And that's what Nikki's Pussy is all about, making cats feel confident. Uh, so here, uh, here are um, the uh, Pussycat Spanks. Uh, Pussycat Spanks, um, they, uh, <laughs> they have a hard elastic band inside to suck, suck that pussy in. And, um, you know, and again, the signature Nikki's Pussy uh, Bo, because I really think that that's what Nikki's pussy is all about. You know, those little, those little details that, uh, that, that make, make a cat feel special. And, and just so you know, if you're home and you're like, wow, my cat is large and could use some spank. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a little hint. This is easy. You know, I understand times are hard. Money's tight. Uh, this is a very easy DIY project. Oh. Um, just cut the leg off your own off your own spank. Right. <laughs> right. Cut the leg off my spank. That's too easy, almost. Almost, almost. Until you try to put it on the cat. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um. 
Is that why you have all those band-aids on your face? Uh, yeah, my business partner uh, slash model, <laughs> well, ex-model. <I> right. <laughs> We had some uh, we had some creative differences. Sorry, what's and your business partner's name? Battle Cat. Right. right. Uh, yeah, I adopted her from the SBCA. Okay. I have fed her, gave a roof over her head, and she won't even put on a negligee for her mother. Unreal. She really, really didn't like like it. But your cat will love them. You know, that's just my cat. You know, she was, you know, she grew up in an orphanage. Right. <laughs> it's tough times. Problems. Yeah. She really did a number on you, though. I see you had some on your head there, too. Yeah, yeah. You might have noticed I shaved my head. Uh, she really got me good uh, on the scalp there. Oh. Uh, nearly uh, pulled it right off. Um, and uh, so the doctor had to shave around it to get the stitches in so right. like oh what the heck we might as well just <laughs> even it all up <laughs> oh my god wow you put a lot of effort into this and honestly uh my blood sweat and tears <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> passion, sometimes your passion hurts right i i i don't do anything half-assed right. <laughs> so if people want to buy this lingerie for their animals where could they uh, get that uh, Nikki's pushy .com. Okay. Don't really Google Nikki's pushy. <laughs> you don't do that. It is uh, just, just a go to my Facebook. Of... <laughs> tell, me, tell me how many nipples your cat has. I'll rig something up. Honestly, that's amazing. Uh, how, how have you been doing, by the way, just uh, in general in this pandemic? I'm lonely. Okay. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> Well, thanks yeah. so much for joining us. That was amazing. And uh, I think they're going to go, they're going to be flying off the counter like gangbusters. I'm so lonely. Thank you. All right, Nikki. Well, I'm glad you look like you're doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks again for doing the show. And uh, I no hope, you'll, problem. hope you'll come back sometime. Okay. Thanks, Nikki. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my God. I said she was looking like she's doing okay, but she looks very injured. Um, yeah. I uh, I need some time to just kind of uh, digest that. She's a good friend of mine. I, I, <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's totally fine. She gets scratched by cats all the time. That's her deal. She loves it. Battle cat. It's named Battle Cat. It fights. Um, we got we lucked out and i think it's just because honestly um you know people are inside so people are just easy to get and we just happened to get this guy i've been trying to get him for a long time give it up for the yo-yo man You know what I mean? I've been 
around the world. You know, I've met the Queen of England. I've had a cup of tea with her, you know? It was fucking good. I've seen her like all of her jewels and, you know, her earrings and, you know, her rings and stuff. You know, but the place I love most is at home, which is in Burbank, California, which I love. Cause you know what? I love celebrities, you know? I love that like, you know, like people like Mr. T live here, you know? And like all sorts of people like that. <laughs> but like, I don't know. LA is not just about like human celebrities. It's also about like pets and stuff like that. Like a lot of like actors are, are dogs that can do things like, you know, like fucking walk on command or like, you know, with CGI, like fucking fly, you know? And like, or like dogs can do other things like, you know, like pretend they're asleep or dead. You know, like that kind of thing. But you know what? The crazy thing about like LA and Burbank is everything is everyone here is a fucking actor. Everyone needs to drive all the way around everywhere. You know, and honk their horn. You know? Because everyone's got to go to their next audition with their headshot. You know what I mean? It's crazy. But you know what? A lot of people do act here, but what happens though is that everyone here lives alone, which is sad with coronavirus and everything. But the thing is with acting is they with someone. So, you know, like, but the problem is, is that sometimes when you go to some of these film shoots, is they're not like you think. Like, sure, you gotta act with someone. You know, but then when you get there, you find out it's a porn. And then, you know, stuff happens when you try to have sex, but then you can't get it up. You can't get it up. Shit. Well, you got to stay with your dreams, man. You got to stay in your fucking dreams. And, you know, yeah, sure, it's good to have a backup plan of being a doctor, being a dentist, or being a... You know, fucking, uh, I don't know, fucking yo-yo man, you know, whatever. But like, I don't know, that's just fucking crazy, you know? I mean, the thing about it is no matter what, you just gotta practice and like, you know, get good at like one thing or, you know, you know, like, you know, like that kind of thing. Or like, you know, you gotta fucking, you know, do like this fucking thing. You know, like this, like, like a balancing act. You know, but anyway, oh, like, oh shit, I gotta take a shit. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, that's, that's my bit. <laughs> I'm Yo Yo Man. Damn, what's up, man? Yo Yo Man. Oh my God, it's been like forever. I've been trying to book you forever. Yeah, man, how you doing? You, uh, you rolling with it or what? <laughs> nice, nice. Oh my God, it's so weird being here with you with your classic pea soup shirt and all that stuff. Dude, I love pea soup. You know what? Honestly, though, when I ordered it, I ordered piss soup and then they fucked it up. Mm. <laughs> they really fucked it up. I don't know, you know what? But hey, life has its ups and downs. <laughs> so, how are you uh, dealing with this whole uh, situation? Are you just doing a lot of yo yoing or what? It's great. You know what? I'm with my best friends right now. I have. Uh, like. <laughs> another yo-yo oh okay and are like, they just hidden all over the house i just i don't know if there's going to be theft so all right. make sure i have all my yo-yos hidden away because like you know have you ever seen the movie cast away starring uh tom cruise of course um, no no I so anyway, in that movie he's best friends with a volleyball tom Will hanks right yeah so i found like you know tom cruise made it like super oh. like I don't know. They gave me the idea. <laughs> so yo-yo is kind of your volleyball. Yeah. Yeah. Yo-yo is my volleyball. And this virus is kind of you being cast away. You know, honestly, you should have your own show or movie or something because uh, you got so much to say, you know? I really do. Uh, 
<laughs> oh my god! You see that guitar? Yeah, that's what pretty cool. That? <laughs> Dude, do you play? I, I, I thought I could attach yo-yos to each string, but it 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 doesn't work that way, man. <laughs> well, it dude, honestly, keep trying new things. Would you do that for me? Make would you make that promise? You know what, Pinky promise. Sick. Everybody, give it up for Yo Yo Man in your homes. And give it up for yourself. Thanks. Yeah, give it up for yourselves. Give it up for yourselves. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me, Yo Yo Man. I hope you'll come back when you have a new trick or something. That's dope. Yeah, man. <laughs> Keep your stick on the ice. Will do, Captain. Peace. Wow, Yo Yo Man. Every, every, he did not disappoint me at all. He's every bit the Yo Yo Man that I thought I was going to get. And uh, wow, that was amazing. You know what? Two years of trying to get that guy on the show was way worth it. <laughs> uh, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, and you know what? Let's bring Josh back out here. Um, Josh, are you there? I am here. Oh, I can hear you. Oh. There you are. Um, I, so I'm really excited about this. This is another person I've been loved, dying to get on the show. Um, and we get to just kind of sh shoot the shit with them. So uh, let's bring them out. Are you ready? I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. That's why I came. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Kate Trevor Wilson. There he is. What's up? Hey, buddy. How's it going? How's it going? Dan and Josh and Internet. Yeah, man. Thanks for doing the show. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, how you been doing? How you been holding up over there? Just drinking my sweet mug of root beer. Mm, delicious sips. <laughs> just is that what you've been doing most of the time? Just kind of drinking root beer. Yeah, yeah. I've been drinking a lot of root beer. Uh, <laughs> case and case after case of root beer. But uh, they stopped sending me cases. Now I've just been getting some bottles. So. Okay. They were sending me cases. On the uh, grocery. My uh, fiance and I have been uh, playing grocery roulette during the pandemic. We just, uh, <laughs> uh, we order our groceries from the stores to get delivered. So we put our, our hopes and dreams out in the universe and we just see <laughs> what food gets delivered. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's always, so magical. It's always adjacent to what you wanted. Yeah. It's fun. It's like you get almost what you asked for, and then it, it, it's like I, I cooking during the pandemic has become one long episode of Chopped. You just what's in the mystery bag? It's true, and I'm always the loser of Chopped a meal. <laughs> I thought I was good. Um, uh, did you do what I do? Uh, you say you say you're drinking a lot of root beer. I kill things. So it's like when I like something, like I like watermelon today. I'll eat watermelon till I hate it, like till I just the taste of it makes me sick. I tend to go overboard. Like the things I, if I like something, I like it a lot. I've been going in waves between diet Dr Pepper and diet root beer. Ooh. Yeah, those are very similar. They're like cousins. Yeah, yeah, less caffeine in the root beer. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask you right off the bat, because uh, you're always like, you're one of my favorite storytellers. You oh, thanks, are great right. at telling a story. And uh, I I teach stand-up a little bit now. And I always say, if you want to learn how to tell a story, watch K. Trevor Wilson, because he just knows how to uh, get to the beats. And you know all the you do all the right things. And it's uh, very pleasing to watch. And it's hilarious. Okay. So. Yeah, no problem. Uh, but I wanted to know, like, what what's like the weirdest thing you've experienced through this whole thing? Because there's so many different things happening, and uh, we're all living different lives right now in our homes. But is there anything extra weird that you've kind of seen, or uh, we think because uh, like we uh, I live down by the the water, and uh, they shut down all the parks and uh, and uh, and all the parking lots down uh, down here to stop people from from gathering and social distancing and what we've noticed in the neighborhood is uh the 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 drug dealers don't have anywhere to sell their illegal drugs no more because all the parking lots by the waterfront have been closed <laughs> up so we uh -huh. just have used drug dealers driving around the lakefront of toronto 
<laughs> just, <laughs> just showing up to a locked door. Because people people keep driving up and they have nowhere to buy their drugs, so they they, they just end up circling my building's parking lot for a bit and then leaving. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, Josh, you had a question for K Trev, right? Um, I got. I, I'll get to mine in a second. But speaking of empty parking lots, there's a question in the Facebook chat um, that wants to know your opinion of uh, WrestleMania and the whole empty arena. Uh, they're calling it an era. I hope it doesn't last that long. But uh, how do you feel about that? Uh, you know, like, I'm glad that someone's making shows, even though they probably shouldn't be like, like, you know, there's a part of me that's like, all right, you probably shouldn't be doing that. But it's like, I, I still like watching wrestling though. So, I, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of fun that they're trying something new and, uh, it's been nice that they can just tell the story without having an idiot scream what and who, <laughs> uh, and everything. So like there's there's part of me that like kind of digs it, and like I, I like some of the empty arena matches you know in the '80s like Terry Funk and and Jerry Lawler had a great one so it's you know not unheard of um, but uh, but yeah like I think every any live performance without an audience is feeling kind of sad right now so <laughs> while they're they're doing it I can't think any of the performers getting a ton of gratification out of it. <laughs> that undertaker match was very funny yeah but i mean they didn't get to hear the laughs they had no it's idea. true no you're right they don't get anything from it um this is off topic but uh dan tamizian who's kind of working the switches for us right now uh he worked on a show called dark side of the ring that i've been watching a lot of if you haven't seen it yet highly recommend it dino bravo was the episode yesterday and i haven't seen the like, dino bravo episode very very good show i'm, I, I'm familiar with the story it's kind of fun because like as a wrestling nerd this is all the stuff that i've spent thousands of hours reading about that that uh, now the everyone is talking about in the vice documentary so it's funny because it's like now people are watching these shows and then my friends are coming up going, oh my god i just watched the bruiser brody episode wrestling <laughs> like fucked up and like, well i was yeah. saying it's a genius show because every wrestler's life is fucked up <laughs> like like i don't think anyone has a normal life you know what i mean it's a crazy carnival i mean it literally it, it started from carnivals yeah uh, you know, pro wrestling is the combination of a professional sport and a carnival sideshow. That's literally how it came to be. So here's another audience question. Uh, someone wants to know what the K in front of your name stands for. Your K, you go by K Trevor Wilson. Oh, I, I, uh, uh, it's actually an easy Google. It stands for Kingsley. Um, it's my middle name and my grandfather's name. When I started acting, there was another Trevor Wilson. Oh. Uh, needed a stage name so we took my middle initial and uh threw it out front it was kind of funny though when uh, jared kiso wrote uh, season three of letter kenny he didn't realize that my name stood for uh kingsley that the state case stood for kingsley and there was actually a joke in the season where i made fun of a guy whose name was kingsley <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome funny i was like you just and i said to him on set i was like are you just getting a soft digging at my name and he was like what do you mean i'm like that's what the case stands for he's like <laughs> what i had no idea i just <laughs> <laughs> that's great i love when stuff like that happens I'm like tattooed on my arm <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know huh <laughs> um this is a great segue though uh you were actually on tour with letter kenny for those of you that don't know um uh K Trev is on the show Letter Kenny on Crave, which you can check out anytime you want because it's just. And Hulu, if you're watching this. And Hulu. And uh, yeah, he uh, was on tour with the Letter Kenny guys. And, uh, and then this happened and the tour got canceled. So what happened there? Just uh, you just stopped in your tracks and all went home, I guess, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we started off in uh, New Brunswick uh, doing the tour. We were there for about like, a few days rehearsing and getting it ready. And that was sort of what, when the rumblings were starting. Uh, but you know, like maybe one person had, had, I don't even know if the first person had come back to Canada with it yet at that point. And, but I mean, you know, there was talk that like, you know, we're doing the tour of this or that. And then, uh, we, we had meet and greets as part of the show. So pretty quickly we were, uh, sanitizing the crap out of ourselves and the VIPs, you know, everyone, uh, everyone was, had to put on a uh, hand sanitizer before they walked in and. Jeez. Then again, after they walked out, and then uh, about a week in, 
you know, it had gotten worse. So uh, we changed everything to uh, we weren't shaking hands and uh, no more hugging, just doing the pictures and <laughs> nodding. But other than that, the show seemed to be going fine. And uh, it was like it was a calamitous tour in just the three weeks we were doing it. We uh, we started in uh, New Brunswick and like, two of the cast lost their luggage on the flight in. Which uh, he's like, okay. Well, I mean, you know, hopefully that's the worst thing that happens. Uh, and then when we were on our way to Hamilton to start the uh, uh, the Southern Ontario wing of the show, the the tire blew out on our tour bus, and uh, water got up and messed up the shorted out the hydraulics or something, so the whole bus had to be overhauled and was uh, uh, on blocks for about a week getting fixed. So luckily, we were like all of our shows were sort of in an area for a few days. So we drove around in a van. And then once we got the bus fixed, we had to cross the border into the States and start the, uh, the American leg of the show. And we, we kicked off the American leg with a wicked sold out show in Detroit, uh, about 4,100 people wow. uh, at the show. And uh, just a, a rock and roll kind of experience. The, the fans in Detroit were just amazing. And uh, and then the next day we set off to Buffalo to uh, continue the tour. We had a day off in Buffalo, and I was actually on my way to meet the ride to go to the theater for sound check for the Buffalo show when I got the call saying that the tour had been canceled. Uh, at that point, like the day before, we'd heard that the Seattle show had been canceled, but that was it, and then in less than 24 hours, 10% of the uh, venues had uh, had pulled out and uh, wow. in lockdown. And so it was like, you know, uh, do we keep going and watch everything else fall and, and lose money on it? Or do we no, get we did the right thing, I think. 15 minutes away from the border. So we just called the tour and got on the bus and, uh, you know, we're back in Canada and well, I hope this thing ends sooner than later and you guys get to get back on that because it sounds like it was uh, going well and it was fun. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a fun group and it was a fun show. Um, you know, it was kind of our, uh, we've been doing the, the live thing for a few years, but this was the first time we were doing it with, with a nine person cast. Uh, the first few runs had been uh, myself and, and Nate and Jared and Mark Forward. And then uh, on the, the last run, uh, we did the three shows in the States last year. Michelle joined the group. And then this time we had nine cast members. We had the hockey players and the skids with us. And uh, the shows had been a ton of fun. And uh, we were having a great time. Uh, I, was I was telling you earlier, we have a game we play where every time we stop at a truck stop, we, uh, we buy each other the most ridiculous gift <laughs> that they have for sale in the truck stop. Uh, it was a tradition that Mark Forward started where he would just keep buying Jared Kiso ridiculous things and then act like it was something he knew Jared had always wanted, but, <laughs> but you know, wouldn't splurge and get himself. I think first thing he got him was a crystal dragon, and then he got him a model uh, spaceship. And then <laughs> That's awesome. I love stuff like that. Uh, I, I got Jared a, a medieval skull. Uh, shot glass he got uh uh her is he a, a wolf sweater like just <laughs> <laughs> and then you know what those like are joke gifts but they're the ones that you like remember they have a story behind them you know what i mean the best was uh, mark forward snuck into jared's bunk and hung a 3d picture that he bought him that was like a hologram that changed as he moved and he was like i know you love art and this is two pictures <laughs> in one it's oh, even man. better <laughs> Dude, i love you so much i'm so happy that the tour was going well and that's hilarious i wish i could i'm gonna buy you a weird gift next time i'm at a gas station just to, <laughs> just to be a part of it um thanks for doing the show uh josh your question was it just a, a getting trevor to suggest a comic book Oh yeah, we well, were gonna because uh, I mean clearly you have we have uh, one minute. <laughs> clearly you have a lot of comic book uh, interest, though. Like I do, I was gonna see if you had any uh, rec recommendations for the audience of things to read in isolation. Uh, well, I mean, uh, I don't like to do product placement, but I've I've got the the Marvel Unlimited app where you pretty much have online access to the uh, Marvel library. Yeah, which has been a super handy tool uh, <laughs> in these locked in times. 
And uh, so I've been doing that. And then you can just dip into any story that you haven't uh, read yet. And I actually went back and read uh, the original Secret Wars and the Dark Phoenix saga. So if you've never actually read them, uh, those are my recommendations. For well, that. you heard it here first. Kate Trevor Wilson, watch Letter Kenny on Crave. And if you haven't seen the roast battles from the past, check him out. He's on there too. Uh, Kate Trev, thank you so much for doing the show. Uh, and Thanks for having please me, stay Bob. safe and healthy. And uh, I love too. you, buddy. Love you too, Bob. Have a good one. Peace. Peace. All right, Josh. That was great. We're at the end of the show. We have one more person to bring out. Man, it goes by so quick. I know, and it's another person that I've been really wanting to get on my show. Uh, it has to be this way, and that's fine with me, but uh, he's one of my favorite people. Just like, I love his sense of humor. I just love Silly. Silly is my favorite sense of humor, and this guy just like knocks out of the park. So let's not make people wait any longer. Let's just bring him out. Mr. Ryan Belleville, turn off your camera, Jeff. What, did it work? Is it working? Is the light happening? I've been yeah. losing the lights. Can you still see me okay? Yeah. It's it's still very sunny here in LA. That's very nice, guys. Also, Secret Wars is a great uh, is a great thing. I got to agree with K. Trev. Absolutely love that comic. I watched it, uh, or I used to read it back in the day, way back, like the OG in the, nine, in the 80s. And I, when I was sick, when I was sick and staying home, I just sit there and read the Secret Wars all about the Beyonder and all that such and such. So... Uh, it's, it's very exciting to hear somebody else reference uh, such a cultural moment here. I'm here in Los Angeles as well. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful LA. Uh, it's so much like Canada, except um, I've given up my health care for, for the endless opportunities of, uh, of, of California. What a treat it is. What a treat it is. Uh, but we are getting by here. It's been, it's been very good. I've been answering uh, all the emails. Uh, from the countless um, companies who've been so kind to email me. I've been getting lots of uh, emails from them just telling me their response to COVID. I'm like, thank you, Domino's. I really need to know that you're no longer letting people sneeze on the pizza. So top shelf like that one. Um, actually, we haven't even been ordering it. We haven't ordered it in for a month uh, or over a month. We've been locked down for ages. We have our masks. I've gone out a couple times. My my bandana in LA, you kind of have to wear a white bandana if you're going to do it. There's some colors you don't want to walk in to. You, you know what I mean? You don't want to wear a red bandana around in LA. Even if you're in a Whole Foods, you, you still don't want, uh, you know, the Crips and people to be like, yeah, shooting you while you're picking out uh, persimmons. Um, that was the quickest Whole Foods-y type thing I could reference. And I do live close to a Whole Foods. Oh, <laughs> life imitating art. Also, uh, talking at a comedy show on a live video is uh, kind of the greatest ego stroke uh, a comic can have because I don't have to look at ugh, filthy audiences. I just get to look at my own face. So I get to look at me while I'm the only one talking, which really is all comics want. I'm, I'm realizing I didn't even need an audience in the first place. People to be like, yeah, um, shooting you. Uh, it is interesting though, and I like you're watching all those people. They're losing. They're they're letting their roots grow out. Uh, <laughs> they're the tan. The fake spray tans are disappearing on people. Um, like the fake nails. Ooh, the fake nails. I saw a, a woman. This is right before the the end. When I was in Florida, I don't want to brag. I was doing shows. I was like K. Trev. I was off uh, touring around America right when the shit hit the fan. And I was at McCurdy's Comedy Theater, which is a fantastic club in Sarasota, Florida. And at the beginning of the week, it looked great. And it, then we found out, oh, it's pretty slow. And we, we still had like 200 people there, but it was getting slower every night and worse and worse until it was canceled. And then we left. But while I was there, everyone knew COVID was going on. Uh, a lot of old people, they didn't give a shit. Like it's an old person town. I saw a bunch of old people on segways scoot through the street, like the worst Mad Max I've ever seen, like a Mad Max meets like a Viagra ad. And um, uh, like everyone seemed pretty cool, but a little too cavalier. Like I, I saw a delivery person, a DoorDash, I don't know if everyone has DoorDash, but it's like a Uber Eats, deliver hot wings to a woman when I was in Florida, when it, COVID was exploding, it, it's taken off, uh, to a pharmacist and he delivered hot wings to her. And I'm like, it's a pandemic. She's eating like finger food at lunch and she had these giant nails 
like disgustingly, like those, their nails were so long that there were SARS still under them. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Anyways, but seriously, and this is the thing that grosses me out so much about the long nails, because there's also a woman in my apartment building uh, who still has the, still has them. And I'm like, it's time to get rid of the long nails. I think like I, they grossed me out before. Cause like, how do you wipe your ass with the long nails? It's just, it's like raking your ass. And I have a very sensitive ass which uh, is much like my, my hair growing out. It's, it's going unbleached, which is very upsetting because I was trying to bleach my asshole as white as it could be and get as dark a tan as possible so I could be like a, <laughs> like a lighthouse on a, a stormy night. I could guide sailors uh, in from the whatever. Anyways, America's just a catastrophe. It's just an utter catastrophe right now. I don't know what to say. They're talking about opening Vegas for some reason. The lady is like, hey, I love gambling. Uh, and, and I have friends who are really outraged that they're trying to like, they're trying to reopen Vegas. But I'm like, it's a city full of compulsive gamblers. Like, it's not like people are making great life choices uh, to start with. Um, the, uh, New, like I got a lot of friends in New York too. Like things, things they're like going crazy. Uh, the, the one thing that did drive me nuts is the tiger when they found out the tiger had coronavirus and uh, that bothered me not because was, like, first of all, I love zoos. I'm a zoo man. Some people hate zoos because they're like, it's like prison for animals. And I'm like, man, some animals, maybe, uh, maybe they deserve to be in prison. I don't know. I, I'm just saying maybe that panda is a pedophile and needs to be locked up. But the, uh, the tiger got sick and I'm like, how the fuck is a tiger getting a test? when I can't get a test here in Hollywood. I'm just saying, this is what the priorities are in America. I mean, I love the fact that Trudeau talked about speaking moistly, and that's the craziest thing that he said. Meanwhile, here, it's like Trump's going on the air, and he's just like, I think the cure is the blood of the immigrants. And you're like, no, dear God, please. I don't even know what, I, oh, I, I did wanna say one thing about my daughter. She told me to tell you guys something. I can't remember. I'm just trying to keep it together, guys. I've been very bummed out at times. I've been depressed. I've been trying not. Uh, depression, my rules, are a lot like when you take mushrooms. Uh, stay off social media. Uh, don't look in the mirror and don't call your mom. And, um, and, and also, I, I, I'm trying to keep away from people's opinions because everyone seems to have an opinion about this shit that's going on. And I'm like, opinions are like assholes. Uh, if I've had enough to drink, I'll let you put a finger in my opinion, my very, very bleached opinion. The point is, I hope everyone's staying safe. And the thing you can all do right now, people are like, hey, I did a bunch of interviews today with CBC and they're talking about uh, uh, art and comedy and how important comedy is right now. The real thing is, we all know that it's important. We're all binging Netflix and comedy specials nonstop. So you guys, uh, if you don't have any money to donate, um, like they said, you know, uh, push this link out there. Find comics you like, uh, follow them on Instagram and Twitter, retweet them. All these little, little things are important because um, artists have nothing right now and we need a little sweet, sweet support. So that's all I gotta say. <laughs> Ryan, uh, speaking, Is that anything? Of, uh, speaking of people, uh, you know, checking stuff. I through. forgot I was doing, by the way, I forgot that there was supposed to be like some sort of comedy thing going. This just turned into. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was just, I was in another world watching you. You just uh, I, put me in the zone there. I appreciate it. It's the good light. <laughs> uh, I'm losing the lighting in here, but we still, it's still sunny here in California. I'm dude, thank you so much for doing the show. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you, man. And uh, please get his album, uh, Friday Late Show, on May 8th. Um, it's coming out on, I'm sure, all the places you get things all on the, uh, Apple places. Music and iTunes and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. look out for that. You will not be sorry. It's going to be a wicked album. Ryan Belleville, everybody. It's going to be wicked huge. It's going to be wicked huge. Stay all safe. Right. Stay healthy. See you guys. Peace. All right. That's it. That is the show. Uh, Josh, you can come back. Danny can come back. And uh, after this, um, there's another great show on the Comedy Bar Twitch channel. Stick around for your hood's a joke. Uh, if you're not watching this on Comedy Bar Twitch, why don't you switch on over at 9 o'clock and check out your hood's a joke. Should be a fun one. Uh, there's some battling going on. It's a roast battle. Um, and we're going to end the show uh like this. Thank you to the 427. Thank you to Barb Brownlee. Thank you to Michelle Lost Beauty. Thank you to everybody that donated. Thank you to Antimesian for doing the switches. 
Thank you, Josh, for being the voice of the show. Thank you to everybody on the show. Brian Barlow, Nikki Payne, uh, K. Trevor Wilson, Ryan Belleville, and of course, Sebastian Siddiqui, who did a wicked job on the news. And we're just going to end with this video. And uh, when the video is done, so is the show. Peace. Oh. You ever have these things when you were kids? Jelly beans. Yeah, jelly beans. I, we called them jelly beans. Uh, no, we never had them. I wished we had them, but we never got them. These used to be the only thing that made me feel normal. You know? I knew that if I was eating these and all the other kids were eating these, then I was like the other kids. For me, I, I experienced being different my entire life because my parents don't look anything like me. I mean, can you imagine that? You grow up and it's like you're an alien with the people who you are supposed to be the closest with. Like, that's, that's our society. You know what I mean? But it's like, you know, before you can even be okay with any of that, you have to be okay with who you are. It's like you can't expect people to look at you and think anything different. I mean, I love, I just love being around people who really get it and who can express themselves and talk. It's that opening. It's the opening of, of our souls mm. that makes us all close. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, tune in live every Wednesday at eight o'clock for the DG special. We have a great episode coming up with uh, George Basil from the HBO show Crashing. Uh, Alice Wetterland, amazing standup. Also, uh, she was on Silicon Valley. Um, Andy Hall and Sarah Hillier and Keith Pedro and another video. It's going to be so fun. So tune in Wednesdays at eight o'clock comedy bar, Twitch channel, DGS productions, Twitch channel, Facebook live, Twitter, Periscope, uh, YouTube live and uh, D live. Cool. See you later.